Here's what Sarah, a woman from somewhere in cyberspace, emailed me recently after reading one of my urban legend books. She reported that this story, told by her mother, still scares the daylights out of her. I heard this story around 1986 from my mother. I was six years old, and to this day, I won't stick my hand under the bed at night. I'm not sure where she heard it, though I imagine it was sometime in the 60s or 70s in Texas. This couple is going to visit friends in the next town overnight, and they want to hire a babysitter for their daughter, but she begs and pleads for them to let her stay home alone, and they finally decide, okay, she's old enough they'll leave her without a babysitter for the first time. She's actually a bit nervous about this, but she has a pretty big dog, and she figures he'll protect her if anything happens. So that night, her parents leave, and there she is. She turns on the radio and calls her dog into the living room to keep her company, and everything is fine. Then, just as her favorite song ends, a news bulletin comes on, on the radio. A killer has escaped from the insane asylum out of town. He's at large, he's extremely dangerous, and nobody should go outside if they can at all help it, lest he get them. The girl tries to tell herself that she has nothing to worry about because her dog will protect her. But after that, she's really creeped out, and she decides to just go to bed. Her dog always sleeps under her bed, and tonight is no exception. As she's drifting off to sleep, she sticks her hand under the bed, and he licks it. So she feels a bit less scared. A while later, she wakes up to this weird dripping sound. She can't figure out what it is, and she's a bit more scared, but she sticks her hand under the bed again, and the dog licks it again, so she goes back to sleep. But later the noise wakes her up again. Drip. 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 Once more she sticks her hand under the bed, and her dog licks it so she feels better and starts to go back to sleep. But the dripping noise is really bothering her, and she still can't fall asleep. She gets up and checks, like every faucet in the house, but none of them are dripping. She does notice, however, that she can't hear it in the living room, so she decides to sleep on the couch. She goes back to her room to get her pillow and calls her dog to come out from under the bed, but he doesn't come. She bends down and looks under her bed and she sees the escaped killer. He's holding her dying dog in his arms. He'd ripped off its jaw to keep it from barking and its blood is going all over the floor. Drip, drip, drip. Sarah's story has elements of several typical horror urban legends. There's the radio warning of an escaped maniac. The home alone theme, the violent crime, the ghoulish behavior, and especially the oral transmission of this true story down through the generations supposedly true anyway complete with spooky sound effects but something's missing from the us usual virgins of the licked hand as folklorists call this legend there should be a note written in blood that sums up the horror here's one such version as a Utah State University student told it to me during a folklore conference I attended there a few years ago. 
You must imagine a group of adolescent girls huddled together during a sleepover or slumber party, if you prefer, scaring themselves by telling this little chiller. There was a blind woman who had a seeing eye dog, and her sighted roommate left her once for the night, reminding her to be careful because some convicts had escaped from a nearby prison. The blind woman went to sleep with her dog beside her bed, and during the night she thought she heard some noise. To comfort herself, she put her hand down and felt a lick on her hand. In the morning, her roommate returned and found the dog slashed to death, and the apartment had been robbed. Written in blood on the mirror were the words, Humans can lick too. You've probably figured out by now that stories like this can be told in endless variations. The seeing eye dog is an unusual detail, probably inserted by the teller to justify having a dog in the room. But that's not the end of the possible changes. Here's another rather mixed version of the story, coming also as it happens from Utah State University and as reprinted in a folklore collection. A girl was babysitting the three children of her neighbors. Before the mom left, she told her to keep the doors locked and the family dog close to her all the time they were gone. The dog would protect her and lick her hand from his regular spot behind the couch. The babysitter put the three children to bed went to the kitchen to get a snack and returned to the living room to watch TV. She then noticed that the back door had been blown open which scared her because she thought the mum had locked her in. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary so she went back to wait for the kids parents. Then the phone rang. A man on the other end said, you had better go check the kids. She thought it was a prank call but she checked to see if the guard dog was still with her to protect her. He was. The call came three more times and finally the girl decided to check the kids. When she reached the top of the stairs, there were the three children mutilated, the dog was butchered, and a bloody axe was there beside them. When she ran downstairs to call the police, Humans Can Lick Too was written in blood on the glass coffee table right in front of where she had been sitting. The murderer had been licking her hand ever since she had gone to the kitchen to get her snack. Simon J. Broner, American Children's Folklore, Little Rock, Arkansas, August House, 1988, page 151 quoted from a 14-year-old girl interviewed by a USU student for a folklore class in 1984. I'll leave you with this last version. Something to ponder, something to think about. Here's one version told recently by an Eastern University student. About 10 years ago on a college campus in Virginia, a really freaky incident happened. Two roommates were out at a party and one decided to go home early because she was tired. She came home to find a stranger in her room with an axe in his hand. He killed her and laid her down in her bed. Well, the other roommate came home and decided not to turn the light on so she wouldn't wake up her roommate. When she woke up the next morning, she rolled over, only to see her dead roommate. As she was frantically running out of the room, she saw a message written on the mirror in blood. Aren't you glad you didn't turn on the light? <laughs>